Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a drugstore beauty haul and review and demo. So I'm also going to be showing you demos of these products on my face, just so you can get a little bit of a better feel of the texture and the way that these products apply. And I've used all these products multiple times, so I can give you a little bit better bits and bobs of information on why I like them and who I think they'd be good for. So I wanted to mention two of my, well, it's actually the same brush, but um, I purchased two of them. So it's the e.l.f. Complexion Duo brush. This is really similar to the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Complexion Duo brush. I will say I've only purchased the e.l.f. Heavenly Complexion Duo brush twice in like eight or nine years. So they last me about four to five years, give or take. It's a really nice, high quality brush, but it is quite an investment. Um, I really like using these specifically for recommending a great affordable complexion brush that's you know not gonna break the bank, but also because they are really great quality. Um, I find them to last a pretty long time, but I wash my brushes pretty regularly, and although I take all the necessary precautions to preserve the life of my brushes as long as possible, I do find that the e.l.f. ones tend to break on me a little bit quicker than some other ones. But this retails for $8, and I think it's such a great steal. You get this really nice, um, soft, buffing end which you can use for foundation concealer bronzer blush illuminator anything you find fitting and then you also have this really nice soft concealer brush which is perfect for getting in the nooks and crannies of the face so now i had my eye on the chanel shimmering luminizing body oil but it sold out so fast and i was like you know what daisy did you really need a 90 dollars luminizing body oil probably not but it was in a beautiful bottle and I love Chanel, so I was really eyeing it, but I saw this from Milani and I actually really like it. It's the Luminizing Liquid Bronzer. You can use this for face and body, but I want to forewarn you, I would highly suggest against using this on the face. It's quite flecky and it has a little bit more of a mixed glitter and shimmer appearance on the skin. And it also doesn't produce any visible color on my skin tone personally. Um, I just feel like it goes on the skin and it looks like it's gonna give you a really nice copper bronze appearance, but it actually pretty much much disappears and it leaves you with more of an oily sheen with some glitter and shimmer mixed into it it looks really beautiful on the body I have it on my chest I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it quite as much but it looks really nice on this area the shoulders legs pretty much anywhere that you want a little bit of extra glow but I just don't find a way that I could like fit this into my face makeup where it would produce a result that I want because the flecks of glitter are so apparent in it, but it's a beautiful product nonetheless, and I really like this. I'll be wearing it all summer. <laughs> I tried a couple different base coverage products, and I have one in particular that I'm really excited about. So I tried um, two tinted moisturizers. This one's a BB cream, but the first was the Maybelline Tinted Moisturizer. I've never used this before. I think it's a really beautiful product. It's very sheer, light coverage, but still has the ability to be built up on the skin. So even if I wanted to put like a little bit extra under my eyes or some areas where I had a little bit more visible hyperpigmentation, it did help with covering that and just you know, giving like a little bit more of a blurred out effect without completely giving my skin coverage. So really lightweight, really sheer, feels very light on the skin. It doesn't even feel like makeup but I probably wouldn't recommend this to anyone with an oilier skin type or anybody with a more problematic skin type just because it didn't really pack a punch in terms of coverage. But if you have a pretty good complexion or a really even keel skin type where you're more normal to dry, I think you would really like this. Overall, it's really good. I'll definitely include it in some future videos and tutorials just so you can see a little bit more of it in action. I like it, I don't love it but it's not a bad product. It's just not, like I just needed a little bit more coverage. I could see myself really liking this when I don't need as much coverage, but 
I still have a lot of, um, you know, visible hyperpigmentation on my face. Now the other one I tried, which really takes the coverage up a few notches, but still gives you that true tinted moisturizer feel, is the one from Joa. This is the Joa Perfect Complexion BB Cream. This is medium coverage, and it does have a really nice, smooth, creamy formula. It feels very moisturizing on the skin, sets down to a little bit more of a satin finish, and the coverage in this is good. So if you're somebody who's not really looking for full coverage, coverage but you want a little bit more punch past light coverage I think you'll really enjoy this it lasts a beautiful amount of time on the skin I personally found the Maybelline one didn't last quite as long but the product doesn't really build up that much if that makes sense it's not you know like you could still definitely get a full day's wear out of this but you know what I'm saying like it just doesn't last super long whereas I did find that the Joa complexion BB cream is more like a light coverage foundation I didn't find that I needed to set it with powder if I didn't want to and it just looks really nice and good and I liked it there's nothing like super standout-ish about it, but it's a good one. I do really like it. The complexion product that I have not been able to put down is the foundation I'm wearing on my skin today. It's very customizable and I think a lot of different people are gonna like is the Uma Beauty Flawless IRL Skin Perfecting Foundation. This is phenomenal. Like literally one of the best foundations I've tried. This one is medium to full coverage and each of these, well this foundation specifically has six different formulations. This one is the pink version which has a soft radiant finish to the skin so it's not dewy but it looks more kind of like a softly powdered satin finish on the skin and this one specifically is formulated for olive skin tones. Beautiful, perfect, lightweight formula. The formula does set down rather quickly, I will say, which is a good thing because you'll get a better sense for whether or not you're actually going to need to set it with powder right off the bat. It's not one of those foundations where when you apply it, you need to wait a few minutes to really see how it sets down on your skin and gauge whether or not you're going to use powder or skip it for the day. I think within a few seconds, you'll know whether or not you're going to need powder. It lasts all day. It withstands the July heat you know, light facial sweating from the warmer weather. Um, it's just beautiful and it looks so good in person as well. Like I really do feel like it doesn't look cakey. It covers my hyperpigmentation. It covers my redness. It doesn't emphasize texture and it just looks really nice, really natural, really soft. Definitely like a new favorite foundation of mine. I um, mean, I really like the customizable coverage because you can sheer it out or you can really build it up and it just, it looks really consistent and really beautiful regardless of how much you're wearing of it. I tried two different concealers. So the first is the Mega Last Incognito Concealer from Wet n Wild. This one's in the shade Medium Neutral. I'm also just realizing I forgot to mention the shades of the foundations. So I will put those in the description box for you. But this Incognito Concealer, I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. I'm kind of neither here nor there with this concealer. I think the price point is really great and it's a good concealer, but it's also not creamy enough for my personal preference. I like something that's a little bit more creamy, a little bit more smooth, feels a little bit more on the moisturizing side, but I will give it to this concealer that it feels really lightweight and it does have like a nice, um, somewhat fluid formula and it does build up really nice as well. I didn't find myself wanting to reach for it, but that's not me saying it's a bad product. I just don't like it. I think it wears really nice throughout the day. I don't need to use powder with it. I didn't have any issues with it, you know, migrating or creasing or breaking down any faster than any other concealer. It's just a formulation preference. I like something that feels a little bit more creamy and smooth on my under eyes. Now the one that I really was impressed by is the Wanda me up concealer from joa i think i'm really liking joa complexion products i've only used one product from joa in the past which was a brow pencil so i was intrigued by some other products from the line this one's in the shade sand and this honestly reminds me of a little bit more of a powdery finish nars radiant creamy so you know nars radiant creamy sometimes i think it depends on the batch or the shade some of the shades are a little bit more creamy and dewy versus some of my shades are a little bit more dry and satin matte. And I find that this one performs more like my NARS Custard. It's not as radiant or, 
what's the word I want to use? Like, it's not quite as emollient as the uh, NARS one is, but it's really good, and it packs a lot of punch in terms of coverage. The shade Sand is also a phenomenal shade for really giving that, like, beamed-up, bright, under-eyed look. I personally would not use this shade for concealing hyperpigmentation because it is a couple shades lighter than my skin tone, so it would just show up as, like, light little dots on my face, but really nice for liquid highlighting and brightening up under the eyes. I don't need to set it with powder. I just like the way that this performs on its own. I tried a couple different bronzers. This one's actually not a bronzer, but I am loving it. So it's the Milani Cream to Powder Foundation, and this one is in the shade Spiced Almond specifically. This is so nice. If you can find the right shade that you think would make a really good bronzing tone for your skin, highly suggest it. It applies like a cream, but it sets down like a powder. So you still get that really nice, natural kind of cream, actual looking tanned skin. Creamy, actually tanned looking skin but it doesn't look quite as chalky as a traditional powder bronzer I think it applies so nice I love this shade it's got a good amount of caramel and kind of like butternut squashy undertone to it not too orange but just that really nice like yellowy golden undertone to where it really does actually replicate I think a natural looking tan to my skin tone and I like this so much and then I also tried um, two shades of the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear I picked up two shades of this because I wasn't necessarily sure um, if it was like the pigmentation of the product. So I didn't want it to be like too pigmented or not pigmented enough to where the dark shade didn't look good or the light shade didn't look good either. I wanted to try them both. I will say this is pretty pigmented. So the darker shade I have in deep tan, I use this strictly for around the perimeter of my face and then I use the shade medium for more of the center of my face. It is the bronzer I'm wearing today. I feel like I get a nice multi-tonal bronze going on. This is so silky smooth. Anytime you run your finger over the products in the pen, they feel slick, they feel smooth, silky, buttery, they're amazing. I really, really like these and I think these are such a nice option. They honestly feel like more smooth than some of my Luxe high-end bronzers, you know, and I have some like expensive ones like the Tom Ford ones and the Gucci bronzer and all of that, but this feels smoother than a lot of those high-end powders and it really applies so beautifully on the skin so this is the joa air light soft powder blush in the shade naked rose i actually think this is more of a nudie apricot it's the blush i'm wearing today obviously the type of tone i typically go for i really like this um, i was expecting it to be completely matte but it actually has quite a visible amount of luminous finish to it so there's a little bit of a slight gold shimmer to it but it's not glittery it's just like a light gold pearl and I think it looks you know really nice kind of like youthful and juicy on the cheek without being like overly dewy and I just I absolutely adore this tone I think it's like such a good one and then I also got the gel crush lip and cheek in raspberry crush from flower first of all this smells so nostalgic to me and I don't know why I think it smells like a candy from like the 2000s I can't put my finger on it but it has a very nostalgic smell to me um, I really like this it's quite sheer it looks really nice and natural honestly reminds me of the oleo eos oleo 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 eso I you know which ones I'm talking about the little deodorant stick blushes this really reminds me of those um, I like this tone. I will say it stays kind of dewy and sticky on the cheeks. So if you don't like that, you will want to set it with either a translucent powder or another blush. I actually picked up the Flower Pot Powder Blush. Now this one's in the shade Warm Hibiscus. This does not pull any pink on my skin tone. It shifts to a pink depending on the light that it's in, but looking straight on, it's very gold. It has the vibe of Nora's orgasm but not quite on the mark but still really pretty so I've been using this topped on top of this and I think it's a really nice everyday bright punchy pink for summertime overall I do really like this but I have a drier skin type so I'm okay with feeling a little bit of stickiness on my cheeks um, if you don't you will definitely want to set this down I like this formula a lot though. I'm actually eyeing the like more kind of like berry toned one because I tend to lean a little bit more into berry tones, but I wanted to try a pink one. 
because I've also been liking pink blushes. This is actually a repurchase of a product that I was such a big fan of a few years ago. It's the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Precious Petal Highlighting Powder. If you want a natural, glazed, wet looking highlight in a powder, this is what you want. And it's also the tone of this highlight specifically that is so special. It's got a lot of warmth to it, so it doesn't look icy on a medium skin tone. I find that icy highlights on my skin just aren't flattering. They look really artificial, whereas Things that have a little bit more warmth without being too gold, they look really good and really flattering on my skin tone. Like sometimes even when things are a little bit too gold, they pull really yellow on my skin because I have those, you know, natural yellow undertones. And this just complements a medium warm skin tone so perfectly and it just looks so good. I really love buffing it into the skin and just getting that really nice like glazed donut highlight. It's not flecky, it's not glittery, it's just a true luminous, you know, pearly type of finish on the skin. This is something that I totally picked up on a whim because I loved those, you know, like kind of late 90s, early 2000s JLo looks where she had that like really bright doe-eyed pearl um, inner corner highlight and it just made her look so so youthful and I thought that this would be the perfect shade to achieve that look and I think it totally is. It's the um, Expert Wear eyeshadow from Maybelline and it's in the shade Vanilla. I will say I tried using this on my face one time and it just didn't work. I thought maybe it could work but it didn't. Um, this is the color if you want that like bright doe eyed inner corner of the eye where like it just looks so youthful kind of like that Victoria's Secret you know that like bright um inner eye I think it's really flattering and it's so pretty for the summer and spring and it's just like a really nice youthful look I love this I've been wearing it non-stop since I got it I just can't get enough of it because I feel like it really is that color like it looks just like JLo's like it makes me happy let's talk about some eye products and then we'll finish off with lips so the first is the NYX epic wear liner this one's in the shade brown shimmer I love it. It's a nice cocoa brown eyeliner. Um, I was so in love with the LA Girl Ultimate Eyes for so many years, but I wanted to try something new. I typically wear brown eyeliner every single day. I just think it's a little bit softer for daily wear, and I have it on my eyes today, but I still get like a little bit of like smokiness and definition, so... This is a go in my book, super long lasting. You can put it in the tight line or the water line and it lasts all day. And then I also tried a mascara from Joa. This is good. So this is the Joa Lash Up Rising waterproof version. Honestly, it reminds me of a less wispy version of Too Faced Better Than Sex. Um, this is a much cleaner formula. Don't get me wrong, you still get a little bit of that flirty wispiness, but it's not as intense and spidery as the Too Faced Better Than Sex. And I also find it to be a little bit more of a cleaner, volumizing formula compared to L'Oreal's Lash Paradise. Sometimes those super wispy, fluttery mascaras don't work that well on me, but I feel like this is really great. I do feel like I have to forewarn you, this is low-key kind of hard to get off. Um, it usually takes me like two rounds of makeup, eye makeup removal to get this off. I don't know what it is about this waterproof formula, but this is like no budge for me. It holds a curl on my lashes all day, no flaking, no smudging. I really do like this. And if you're looking for a mascara that is waterproof and will hold a curl, I'll, I think you'll really, really enjoy this. But like I said, probably gonna take like two rounds of eye makeup remover to get it off. We're about to talk about a ton of lip products. So first and foremost, I wanna say, um, all of these, I am lining my lips with the Sephora Knock On Wood Lip Pencil. I really think that brown lip liner just completes the look for me. A lot of times when I was testing out certain, some of these products, like for example, the ones from Maybelline or the one from L'Oreal, the first few times I was wearing them, I was like, I don't like this. And then I was like, Try it with a brown lip liner and I think you'll really like it. So magically, I liked all of these tones once I tried it with a brown lip liner. So let's start off with the L'Oreal Paris. Um, this one's in the shade Always Almond. I was hoping that this was going to be um, a dupe for the Chanel ones. And I do think that it has similar characteristics to the Chanel one. Obviously, the price point is so much better than the Chanel. I wasn't able to find any shade dupes, which was such a letdown because some of the L'Oreal nudes look actually really similar to a couple of the Chanel ones I have. But the L'Oreal ones are significantly more cool toned and they appeared a lot more gray on my lips. 
but overall I think if you can find a shade that you really like you'll get the same effect from them so this one is a really pretty shimmery kind of like rosy pink and it's more of a deep tone but I really do like it and then instead of having a clear gloss on one end you actually have a balm stick I'm going to say the balm stick doesn't really produce quite as much glossiness as I would like. So I would rather just pair the color with a clear gloss on top. But what this does is negate the stickiness of the dry down of the color products and gives you a little bit more shine and a little bit more comfortable movement in the lips. So it's good. And I kind of actually prefer the balm on its own than on top of the lip color but overall i like this i like this shade only specifically right now i tried some of the other shades mm, no but this one from l'oreal i have like new favorite drugstore nude status alert this is the age perfect glowing nude lipstick from l'oreal first of all i love this little bullet i think it is so beautiful very chic very beautiful and the formula of this lipstick is amazing it is creamy it is smooth it is silky the tone of this nude is amazing like i love this be prepared to have this take over Brazil, uh, brazilian tan from revlon because i think that's been discontinued this is like definitely my new <laughs> revlon brazilian tan favorite i also gave the maybelline green edition balmy lip blushes a go i do feel like the advertisement of these on the maybelline gondola are somewhat misleading they look really similar to glossier's ultra lips in the promo photos but I find that these have a lot more pigment and they're not nearly as shiny as they looked in those photos. Specifically Desert and Lightning. I just thought that those were so beautiful. They looked glossy. They looked sheer. They looked really pretty on the advertisement. And don't get me wrong, these colors are really pretty. But they're just like not what I intended. So Desert is a little bit more of an apricot nude. It's got a little bit of shimmer to it as well. Um, and then Lightning is a soft kind of nudie mauve really pretty but like i said not what i thought so a little bit disappointed in those this was another letdown this wasn't really my vibe um the simply ages ageless lip flip liner an elegant nude from cover girl first of all look at the shade of the lip liner on this it looks like a really nice like nudie brown but it's purple this is like a straight up like purple lip liner it is not at all what i thought it was going to be I really was let down by this shade i don't know why they're advertising this as a nude so this is kind of like a no-go for me because i was really really excited and there was another one called um daring mocha or like darling mocha from that line i'm glad i didn't get it because i don't think it would have even been a mocha it probably would have been a red at that rate so I also did try these. Love, 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 love. Highly recommend. Um, these are the Uma Floss Gloss High Shine Lip Glosses. This one's in Peachy. Oh my gosh, phenomenal. Like such a pretty milky nude with a little bit of orange to it. It looks really warm, super glossy, and beautiful on the lips. And then this brown shade is in the shade Edible, which just puts a little bit of a cool toned brown on the lips. They are so shiny and so pretty, and I think that these are great um, drugstore glosses. Like, these to me feel really luxury, really top line, and I think they're beautiful, phenomenal. I actually, like, also really like this tube. I think it's really cute. I just, I like the Uma vibe. I like everything about the vibe. I even like the photos that they have on the gondola. I just think it's a really cool brand. Okay, so then we also tried three flower lip products. Flower is honestly like such a hidden gem at the drugstore. It's such a beautiful line. I feel like Drew Barrymore, Drew Barrymore did such a good job with this line. It's totally like a disruptive, you know, mass brand because I think a lot of the products are super comparable to high-end products. So this is the flower lipstick in the shade Buttercup. A really pretty soft pinky nude. I love this little bullet. I just love everything about this. It's really pretty, really cute. The shade is also uber flattering, shiny, somewhat sheer, so not fully opaque, so it doesn't give you a crusty looking lip. It's just really, really pretty. 
And then I am obsessed with this. This is what I'm wearing on my lips today. I've been wearing it in the whole video. I can't get enough of it. I've gone through like a decent amount. It's the Petal Pout Lip Mask. And these actually come in different shades. So you can pick the shade that you want. The shade I have is Nectar. Um, the way it comes out of the bottle is kind of funny. It reminds me of like those Play-Doh people hair. Um, and this is just like a really pretty sheer kind of like caramel nude with a little bit of shimmer to it. Just looks so healthy and so beautiful on the lips. Again, just like beautiful componentry with flower as well. I just, I'm so impressed by this brand. And then finally we have the Bitten Lip Stain. I think there's a lot of Easter eggs in this video if you pay attention to a lot of products that I promote regularly as being some of my personal favorites so you can probably get a little bit of a feel for what are going to be dupes to some of my favorite products. Um, I'll give you a little teaser. I'm definitely going to say that these are a very similar product to the Victoria Beckham Bitten Lip Tints. I feel like Drew just picks like really great staple luxury makeup products and then replicates them for her line so that they're you know at this much more affordable price point i'm all for that this one's in the shade sweet it is beautiful um it does leave you with quite a punchy lip color underneath so if you don't like that just be forewarned that the color does intensify so if you want this to be a little bit softer just wear less of the product because the more you wear of it the more intense that stain underneath is going to become but these are beautiful they set down to that kind of like almost like latex finish on the lips and they feel really nice and comfortable again like can you get enough of this it's just so aesthetically pleasing like i really i love the flower line i think it's very special so that is everything i have tried for this haul if you enjoy hauls formatted more this way where i've used them a couple times and i can give you a little bit more insight to the product please let me know or if you just prefer more spur of the moment showing you the products right when i get them and you know testing them and swatching them on my hand with you live on camera if you would prefer that i can definitely do that as well um and like i said these will be in future videos so you'll get to see all of them used in tutorials as well i will list and link everything as well as have these specific shades in the description box and if you've tried any of these, I'd love to know your thoughts and I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching this one. Bye everyone.